The animals are on parade. The animals are on parade. <laughs> if you want some ideas for a composition, let's get started. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach, not in our usual setting. I'm not in front of the computer, which is behind me somewhere. Yeah, there we go. It's my usual spot. But I wanted to show you, first of all, if you look at the windows, you can see that this is what Vermont is like most of the year. I shouldn't say mostly, but a good half of the year. So it's very white and monochromatic. So if I want to have color, I need to bring it into the studio and I need to bring it into the studio in a cost effective way. One of the ways that I do that is origami paper. This is very cheap stuff and it comes in, I think, 12 by 12 squares and I think an 8 by 8 and, and one of them might even be a 4 by 4. You can get any, you can get any size you want. But I use them for composition. So let's take a look here at what's happening. So in order to have more color and more control over color, huh? Uh, what I do is I use these squares and you've seen that in my paintings. It provides color and also some different choices of angle and can move your compositions in ways that you want either forward or backward. Uh, one of the other things I purchased is these forest animals from Amazon. They're called realistic forest animals. Uh, they have jungle animals and they also have uh, farm animals, which I also have on order. I have, I have plants. <laughs> so what I'm doing is creating worlds. Worlds where I feel like these figures could be talking to each other or have something to say. It's, it's, it's just pretend, but it, it, it reminds me of, definitely of what I did as a kid. I spent hours moving little creatures around and making stories about them. And now I can do that visually. Now, one of the other things I have that I really enjoy are these kind of figures. These are china, and so they're reflective. But these are a little bit more expensive. So to buy these is, um, well, yeah, I would say maybe a family like this. This is a family of three penguins. Um, probably cost about $25 and I tend to find them in Etsy um, but they uh, uh, that can become expensive if you're gonna if you want all the options that I want to have so the other thing that I have that's reflective especially at this time of year are vintage Christmas balls these are glass they make plastic ones but I don't think they're as reflective and I don't know why so what I want to do but I also have some other reflective things like this which is made, I think, to be able to make coffee. Coffee? I'm not sure. But I, I bought it because it has a lot of shiny surface because that's what interests me. I'm not that interested in things. I'm a little interested in things, but mostly I'm interested in things and how light interacts and the space between things. So if you look behind me, let's go in way, way closer. Yeah. See, things start to happen. Things start to happen between objects and what I do is I tend to try to move and manipulate things around until I feel like I have what's a pretty good composition. And then if I'm lucky, because I'm not a very clever person, I'll be able to create some kind of story out of it. That's, that's my ultimate goal. But I'm not a very witty person. I don't, I don't do very well with, with, with words as much as I do with visual. So now one of the things that you're doing with composition is First of all, I think this is fun because it isn't apples and oranges, you know, and, and I think that we generally like to tell stories. Stories are fun because we tend to get locked into traditional still life, right? You know, um, apples, peaches, pears, and cups. <laughs> you know, any, anyone who has a kitchen has, has what they need for a still life. But I'm, I'm interested in telling stories. Now, I'm not witty enough to make stories that actually make any kind of sense. But I've been creating little paintings that do look, appear to have interaction among animals and the reflective objects. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I am going to be getting more animals. I'm going to be getting uh, some uh, barn animals. I think I'm getting some dinosaurs as well. <laughs> because, because I think it would be fun to throw a, t a Tyrannosaurus Rex into a painting. I mean, 
Why not? If you're not amusing yourself, then then uh, why 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 be doing this at all? So. Those are some suggestions for composition and remember when you're using your camera you want to come in over your subject and come in under your subject as well as right in the normal you know eye view that you have. You would just be surprised at how many different shapes and compositions you can get from one setup. You leave the setup alone, but what you do is you move the camera around. So you know it's like this, it's like this up above, from down below, looking up, all these different ways. And you know, you know what I end up doing probably is taking quite a few photos, but they're not all going to work. But later when I have time to kind of go through them, I, the ones that jump out at me, I can tell almost instantly what will work at this point. I can't tell when I'm taking the photo, but I can tell later. And if I, it does take energy. I mean, it takes energy. You got to get down on your hands and knees and look up at your subject. It, it's sometimes I'm a little breathless after one of these sessions, but I end up with probably about 25 to 30 photos and out of those, maybe five that'll work, but it's a lot more fun than trying to set up the perfect still life because I'm not sure that even exists. This is a little bit more dynamic way of going about finding something that you want to paint. And also it crosses the barrier of that, you know, what artist hasn't said, oh, I don't know, I don't have anything to paint. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> you actually do. As a matter of fact, if you just open the refrigerator, just look at the sizes and the shapes and the colors of what's in there, it's filled with stuff. So just open your eyes, to, open your eyes and your mind from apples, peaches, plums, and cups. Not that there's anything wrong with them. They're perfectly fine. And start looking at what you have in your home and you, you'll be surprised. And you might even start with objects that you have an affinity for or something that you really, really love because then the painting will have more meaning to you. And if it has more meaning to you, it probably has more meaning to your audience as well. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.